my mom had a bizarre experience. Her mom passed away 28 years ago. On the 20th anniversary of her passing, my mom was at work as an assistant preschool teacher. So she was assisting the teacher. During free time, the main teacher got up from the group of children she was with, went to the chalkboard, and wrote, quote, Mom says hi. It didn't have anything to do with what the teacher was talking about with the kids, and they never really wrote on the chalkboard during free time, unless it was to explain something to a kid. At break, she asked the teacher why she did that, and the teacher responded that she just felt like she had to. My mom got home that night and told me and my dad about it. A few weeks later, she was on the phone with her older sister. Without my mom prompting, my aunt tells my mom about a weird encounter on the anniversary of their mom's passing. My aunt was a manager of a local drugstore chain and was stocking shelves when a middle-aged man that she didn't know came up to her and told her that he felt like he needed to tell her mom says hi. Ooh. Is that weird? Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> because both of them had that experience, they probed their other siblings. Out of the four other siblings, one brother and one sister noticed mom says hi on that same day. I had always been agnostic or leaning atheist before that, but the experience definitely pushed me towards agnostic, non-religious, but believing that there is an afterlife or something more than this life. And this this one, this, the reply kind of like weirded me out, like thinking about it. Somebody replied and said, I wonder how many times this happens, but most of the time the person doesn't give in to the urge to say a random thing to a stranger. Ooh. It could mean that a lot of the random things that suddenly pop into our minds are put there by other people's dead relatives, which is a creepy thought. It is a really creepy <laughs> thought. It is a creepy thought. I never like would have thought somebody, of that. Yeah, when somebody puts like a random thought into your head. Hmm. Yikes. Great. Now I'm going to be thinking about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's so weird that the mom said hi came to like so many of the kids that same day that the, mom, the anniversary of the mom passing. Yeah. <laughs> This one is one of those ones that has kind of a theme with a couple different stories. I used to work in a nursing home where I cared for dementia patients. Every patient on the hall I worked with would steal spoons from dinner to give to, quote, the kids because they like shiny things. It got to the point where once a week I'd have to go through everyone's room to take back the spoons. I asked the patients about the kids many times but never got a good answer. I'd hear things like, quote, they just live here, or, quote, they stand outside in the snow and look in the windows or, quote, they're my friends who visit. Wouldn't it be so weird if they all didn't do it, but it was everyone, the ones who were still capable of speaking anyways. One time at 3 a.m., one of my patients started screaming, so I ran into her room and found her laying in bed seemingly fine. I asked her what was wrong, and she said, quote, that boy is here again, and he won't get out of my closet. I'm scared. Uh, like me too, Dolores. What the heck? <laughs> wow. So, And then somebody replied, I used to work in a nursing home through high school in the Midwest in a tiny town. I'll never forget the story of the night when four or five call lights went on one of our wings, and every single one was to tell us something to the effect that the children had come and rearranged the furniture. Sure enough, there were chairs pushed around, even in rooms where the resident wasn't able to stand on their own. The creepiest one was the man who was seated on the toilet and had a chair pushed up against his door who wasn't able to stand on his own and used a wheelchair, and someone had to help get him to it. Oh, my gosh. So that's creepy. That Nursing is home creepy. kids are creepy. Yeah. Apparently. Somebody else replied, I worked in a nursing home, too, and I was stationed in a dementia ward for a while. One of my most beloved little old ladies was fairly far into the disease. Every night she worried that a man with a knife was trying to break into her window, or worse, that it was sometimes a grotesque, quote, interdimensional spider. I tuck her in at night. She had a particular way to be tucked in, good and tight, but impossible for her to do it herself, and she would either cry about the man or the spider at the window. It was a huge, non-opening window overlooking a forest, and her room was immediately adjacent to the... Pal I don't know how to pronounce this. Palliative room? P palliative. Palliative room, where we moved people when they were close to death so family could be with them in peace. I'd go look sincerely out the window, and every time I'd tell her, quote, Carol, I see it. Good news, though. It's actually just a moose in the tree shadows. Certainly spooky looking, but harmless. It would have fooled me, too. She was always relieved. I'd close the blinds and continue on, never actually seeing anything. One night, I went to check on her in the night when she was sleeping. As I walked in, I saw the curtains moving. I figured she was up and fearfully staring out the window, moving the curtains. As I rounded the corner, I quickly realized that she was firmly tucked in as I had left her there. I looked at the windows, and on my peripheral vision, on the sliver of exposed glass, something writhed in the corner of my eye. My heart skipped a beat. Then Carol flatly said, quote, You see it now too, huh? I never doubted again that she was seeing something, and I couldn't BS my way out of it that time. She moved room shortly after that, thank Ugh. God. <laughs> That's so creepy. That's creepy. 
And truly with people with dementia or Alzheimer's, they do hallucinate or they really misinterpret things that they're seeing. Yeah. So you never know if, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that it would be really hard to actually believe that yeah. there was something yes. there. Yes. Yeah. And that's got to be so frustrating for somebody that is legitimately, you know, legitimately seeing, seeing something. stuff. Yeah. Uh, another reply to the first original one. I, female 27, was training to be a nurse. Here in Germany, you have to visit and practice at a lot of places. I was working at a hospice, a place where the terminally ill patients could stay until their last day. I was there for eight weeks and was in my last year of studying. I was doing a round, checking on everyone, making sure they were not in pain, needed any help, or just needed to talk. One patient, a woman who was there for days, had a different had diff- had a different breathing, and I called her husband, who was in the group room. I don't know exactly how to describe it. She had her final breath when her husband was holding her hand. It was peaceful, and I know she was gone. At this moment, another patient made a call. We had phones, which would ring if someone requested a nurse. I excused myself and left her room. Deep breath and going to the patient who was calling. I entered and smiled and said, how could I help? How, how can I help you? The man told me that his guest would like to know where the exit was. I was a little confused because he hadn't any visitors that day, so I asked, who do you mean? Maybe I just didn't see anyone because I was spending about half an hour with a dying patient. And he answered, quote, well, this lady here, she wants to know where to get out. I went pale, blood falling into my knees. I was shocked. I stuttered while opening the window. Uh, here's the way to the balcony, and right and left down the stairs is a door. I'll get you some water. Left the room and was hardly breathing, leaning against the wall. Stood there for about five minutes. One of the nurses saw me and asked if I was okay, so I told her what just happened. All she did was smile and say, quote, yeah, that kind of stuff happens here a lot. A few hours later, I asked the man if his guest found a way out, and he said, quote, yes, she did, and she said thank you for everything. And then he, uh, she writes, I had to process that for days, weeks, and months. I still can't believe it, but I'm sure since then that we carry a soul. So I'm assuming that the one that was asking for the way out was the one that just died. Oh, could be, yeah. Yeah, that was trying to figure out where to go. Yeah. And it's just so weird that that happened like instantaneously. Like she passed away, and then this guy said she was in his room yeah. wanting to know. So that one's you know like nursing home stuff is creepy like we used to have saint mary's nursing home in manitowoc and that was supposed to be like majorly haunted but like nursing home stuff like nursing homes are generally believed to be kind of haunted i was relocating across texas and as i normally do i was driving through the night to skip traffic and because so much revoltingness i was relocating across texas and as i normally do i was driving through the night to skip traffic and because it's way more serene that way I was driving straight through central Texas going northwest, so seeing the hill country change to desert in the full moon was super cool. Anyways, I was driving with my now ex-wife, and we were running low on gas. <coughs> Luckily, we were pulling into a tiny no-name town, and we could see an old gas station come around the bend. This encounter happened around 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, this town only had one road, and the station was right at the edge of town at the end of it. When I say old, I mean very old. The type where you have no option of prepaying. You simply flip up the handle on the machine and you hear the pump inside start tr- struggling to get the gas from the reservoir. <laughs> I know exactly where the, what they're talking about, too, like the old-style gas pumps. <laughs> it had the old-style tick readers, too, not a thing electrical on it. I, being the young man that I was, had never seen one like this before, so I walked into the store to buy the gas before I pumped it. The store only had one light in the far back on... What did it say? Hello. <coughs> The store only had one light in the far back on, and I thought it might have been closed since it was barely brighter inside the store than it was outside in the moonlight. Upon entering, I saw the place was deserted. No customers, no workers, nothing. However, there was a strange tune playing on someone's radio that I couldn't place. An old-sounding, upbeat piano piece was playing somewhere around the corner inside, and I heard shuffling once I walked closer to the source. (laughs) It sounds so creepy already. Yes, it does. This place made me feel scared. Not the, whoa, this is creepy scared, but the all hairs are on end, something is seriously wrong here, but I can't figure it out scared. As I turned the corner, I saw a young man standing next to a large radio and dancing his dancing though was extremely off-putting and seriously didn't match the tune at all though the radio was cranking out what sounded like ragtime this guy was running his hands up and down his body and pretty much feeling himself with his eyes closed in what looked like bliss he was going far slower than the music and definitely wasn't on tempo for some reason i couldn't speak i couldn't even move i was in a trance as if every part of me screamed to turn and leave finally i said excuse me i need some gas the guy just kept dancing 
I said it a little louder and he finally slowed down a bit and opened his eyes and focused on me. That's but it so was creepy. like he was but it was like he was looking at a finely cooked steak. Ooh. He was looking almost through me and silently walked to the register not saying anything. I said, "Uh, just $20, please." He again didn't say anything and just stood behind the ancient register, so I just figured maybe he didn't speak the same language or was embarrassed that I caught him dancing. So I laid the money on the counter and went outside hoping he'd turn on the pump. I filled up, told my wife about the weird-ass scene in there, and turned off the pump to kill the horrible grinding noise from the interior pump fighting against gravity to get the gasoline up. Weird thing is, when we were leaving, I looked back in the window and the guy was still standing there behind the counter and my money was still just sitting on the counter in front of him. It was like he was a robot who just turned off once I left. And this is where it gets super weird. A couple months later, I was driving back to San Antonio to visit family and figured we'd stop at that old gas station to see it in the daytime since it had become somewhat of kind of a running joke between us. We pulled into this tiny town and now it's gone. The lot it sat on at the end of the road wasn't even there. It was just grass. No rubble, no pump, no lighting, nothing. It was like somebody just picked it up and moved it. It looked like nothing had been there for years. I still get freaked out thinking about it. Hmm. So, and then somebody replies, you say where you were in Texas, but this sounds more like Twin Peaks. I think you just drove through a David Lynch film. <laughs> yes. And then somebody else writes, I think I've been there. I used to live in Lubbock. Now I live in Austin. And I remember when I would visit my relatives, we would drive through the big empty of West Texas, which is in the middle of nowhere. And it must have been the same gas station because when I was younger, we were taking a trip and my dad needed gas and needed to pee. So he went in and came back out and said there was just this meth head guy just dancing in the back with an old radio. And he left the money on the counter, too. And the guy just stopped and stared at him until we left. And he was still standing there when I looked out my window. I thought the guy was going to murder us or something, but the place is long gone now. That's hella creepy. We haven't visited since my dad was like, we don't do business with meth heads. It's so creepy that you've seen the same thing. Hmm. That is weird. That is such a weird one. I was a vehicle mechanic in the Army Reserves when I was younger. On one overnight drill, we drove a convoy of trucks from Baltimore to Fort A.P. Hill, Virginia on the old state highways. Things started out pretty normally, but as we were driving, the convoy gradually starts slowing down, and after a while, the whole line of trucks has slowed to a crawl. We pulled off the road, and the guy in the lead truck tells us his five-ton won't accelerate at all. We switch trucks, and sure enough, it won't go above five miles an hour. I dropped the truck out of the convoy, and my motor sergeant stayed with me in a pickup truck. About a half hour later, we happen across an old gas station and decide that we are not going anywhere fast, so we will park the truck there. I was to remain with the truck until they could come back later and transfer everything to a different truck. So off drives my motor sergeant, and I am out in the middle of nowhere, Maryland, with nobody around. It starts getting dark, and I see the lights are on, and the restaurant is open at the gas station, and I am hungry as hell, so I go in. What did it say? Revolting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talking about a restaurant and food, so it's, it's fitting. I sit down in a booth by the window where I can keep an eye on the truck, and a lady comes up and asks me what I want to eat. I ask her if I can have a menu, and she says she doesn't have one, but they have fried chicken and mashed potatoes, and that sounded pretty good to me, so I ordered it. I was starving, and it was the best damn fried chicken I had ever eaten in my life. I finish, I get the bill, leave my money on the table, and walk back out to the truck. I stayed awake for a while, but eventually I laid down across the seat and slept a few hours. Now, at about 2 or 3 in the morning, another truck shows up with a bunch of guys, and we start transferring gear to the other truck. One of the guys says, you must be starving, and I say, no, I ate at the restaurant. Well, this guy gives me the strangest look and says, you need to eat at that restaurant, look at it. Well, it's the middle of the night, and I can't see the building that well, and I just told him he was crazy, and we leave. I slept a couple hours, and then we had to go back in the morning to deal with this broken-down truck, and that's when I had a major WTF moment. All the windows to the station are boarded up, and the place looks like it had been abandoned for 20 years. At this point, I am seriously weirded out, so I go in to peek through the dust-covered glass on the door that was uncovered and see my money still sitting on a table. Come on. I couldn't get away from that place fast enough. I bought a Ouija board uh, <laughs> at a garage great. sale. I bought, I bought a Ouija board at a garage sale decades ago because I always liked the design of the board. They are pretty. They are super pretty. Yeah. Tried it once with a friend and a girlfriend, but nothing really happened. Very, very slight movement was all. No messages. I've never even gotten that, but I was a kid. We can try again. Nah. Left the board out as decoration, but never used it again. Tried it again with just the girlfriend one time later, and it actually worked. Took a while to get going, but once we did, we were shocked at how quickly and deliberately it seemed to move, and we kept asking each other, are you sure you're not pushing it? We talked with more than one individual that night, including a mischievous one called Eight that showed up more than once. We would be talking with someone, then the answers would become nonsensical, and we'd ask, who is this? And it would 
answer eight. After an hour, the pointer or slash device, the planchette, was moving around really fluidly, and we were both laughing and amazed and constantly accusing the other person of moving it. I know that I was barely touching it, and it looked like she was too. I'm sure I would have felt that if she was pushing it at the speed it was going, it was more like we were trying to keep up with it. That's so creepy. Yeah, that is. I have a sense of how the trick might work based on little jitters from tired arms, but this was moving around way too fast for that. It was really weird. At one point, we got in touch with someone claiming to be Marie, who knew my girlfriend. My girlfriend couldn't figure it out, but then she remembered a girl back in high school by that name and asked if it was her. In response, the device went over the Wii in the Ouija board brand name at the top, and then my girlfriend remembered that she had known a girl named Marie from French class who had died. That's weird. Oh, that is weird. And and we is French for yes. That Mm -hmm. was one of those goosebumpy moments. We asked Marie some things about where she is now and what it's like there. And then while we were thinking of what to ask next, ne- uh, what well, we were thinking of what to ask next, the device started moving and spelled out, "Who's he?" Super freaky, but it also made sense as I had not gone to school with them, so we said, "Oh, this is so and so," and then it spelled out, "Hi." That's so weird. That weird. Like it's conversing with them. Yeah. We kept asking questions and getting responses, and then at one point I made a joke, wondering how it all works. I suggested that maybe there are Ouija boards positioned around heaven like customer service phones at the airport and they announce it over the PA system when you have an incoming call like Marie, white courtesy Ouija board, please. Paging Marie, white courtesy Ouija. Well, my girlfriend and I were giggling at my dumb joke. The device moves very quickly over to no and then does two very fast loops around the board and on a third one flies right off the board and into the wall across the living room. I guess this is not a joking matter. Yes, this really happened and we were both stunned and both certain that we had not done that and pretty sure the other person had but we both insisted we were just as surprised and scared as the other to this day it remains a pretty inexplicable experience not just the ending but all of it i don't really have an explanation for the speed at which that thing moved around the board or how it flew so far with such a short runway to this day i don't know what to make of it i will say that i left the board on display but dumped the planchette (laughs) so good there we go yeah, because the planchette's the problem. Yeah. I don't know. I just <laughs> I don't know. feel like the whole thing is and then the problem. Somebody like Ouija board stuff, man. I don't know. Then somebody replied, "I saw the ghost of a little girl in my bedroom when I was around ten years old. In hindsight, it was probably what Did sleep it? paralysis. Oh yeah. Nevertheless, a couple of years later, a friend and I made a Ouija board to ask the name of the ghost girl. It gave us the name Haley. They made a Ouija board. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people do. A lot of people just make like it paper, on paper. Letters, yeah. 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 It gave us a name, Haley. We didn't think much of it. Years later, I was cleaning the patio out back. Under the stairs, I cleared dirt and leaves and found where a previous family had etched their names into the concrete. It was the Haley's. I had never seen it before. It messes me up to this day. Oh. (laughs) It's so weird. You're thinking it was a first name and it was was actually the last name. name. Yep. Somebody replied to that. Craziest experience with, was with some friends in college. Previously, my thinking was that there was always one party controlling it, but not after that. I didn't believe in anything paranormal at the time. I was kind of Dana Scully about everything. <laughs> it took a while to get going, but it gave us some non-answers at first, as in it was spelling real words, but not answering our questions. Then it was answering mostly yes and no questions, but I felt like it was lying and trying to scare or confuse us. Then when we asked it asked it its name, it started wildly alternating between Z and A and the control of it. I'm certain my friend was doing that. So it wasn't Z and O. It was a very fluid and would snap right to the letter. So fast it was almost as if my fingers had to chase the planchette. I could see my friend was barely keeping up with the lightest touch as well. It was nonsensical from that point and seriously we and seriously almost throwing the planchette off the board. It definitely gave us negative vibes. We later checked Google, and it said this Zaza thing is apparently a common occurrence. And then somebody replied and said, okay, this is crazy, but I had the same experience, exactly like you described it. Super fast movements, erratic, saying at first that it was a little girl who was murdered and lost her necklace, and when we asked the entity's name, it said Zaza or Zozo. Uh, Can't can't remember exactly. Ha, Zozo. Wrote it off. (laughs) Yeah, we're not supposed to say that name, Mm -hmm. are we? Quit saying in my house. (laughs) Especially in your house. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Wrote it off at the time as just being unsettling, but then when I Googled it later in life, my blood ran cold. It's so weird that they don't know that that's a thing and then later in life they find out that those names are a thing with ouija boards Mm -hmm. possibly demonic somebody else writes all i will say is that i have seen with my own two eyes a deck of cards shuffled and the ouija board used to guess the correct card that was next multiple times in succession i won't say if it's an occult if it's a cult paranormal or what weirdness caused it just that it actually happened 
Somebody else writes, quote, to celebrate the first day of October, a few friends and I all met up at night and went to the local cemetery with a Ouija board to kick off spooky season. Had a few duds right away, but moved locations and eventually supposedly contacted the spirit of a little girl. So many little girls that you contact with uh, Ouija boards that probably aren't actual little girls. Yeah. She said she, she said she died in an accident caused by her father. The conversation seemed innocent enough, so we kept going, but eventually things went south. The spirit said she didn't like one of us. We asked her to point out who it was, and she did, saying that it was because of, quote, what he did. So creepy. Mm -hmm. Weird, but we moved on. She eventually stopped being consistent in her contact. When we asked why, she replied, quote, he's close, and then, quote, he's bad. Yikes. This is when the door on the cemetery mausoleum began to rapidly open and slam shut. It did a few times and then stopped. We all froze and didn't know what to make of it. It wasn't windy, so we had no idea what caused it. We asked the spirit if it was her. She said yes, so we asked her to do it again, and on cue, the door began to open and slam rapidly. Last time I ever used the board. Good call. And finally, last one. This one made me laugh. Super short. Friend and I tried out a Ouija board once. We asked who we were talking to, and the board responded, quote, I am nine eyes. And we promptly stopped. No clue what that means, but I was not about to ask. No. I am nine eyes. Nine eyes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that is not somebody I want to no. contact on the Ouija no, thanks. board. Yeah. Next. There's some Ouija board stories. There are some Ouija board stories right. for you.